Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me. Other information comes off the Internet. Today is January 1st, 2020. Happy New Year. Um, This is episode number 32. Um, Today, I'm going to stick with my usual format, breaking down one offensive player and one defensive player. And then I got some other information that I would like to talk about. Um, So let me go ahead and get started with my player breakdown. Um, Today, I'm going to start with Christian Meadows, offensive guard, 6'4", 325 pounds. Um, So this is what I wrote about him. Power blocker. Um, plagued by shoulder injury. If he can get healthy, healthy, this guy can be a tremendous guard tandem with Dante Lucas. Quick hands, good feet, loves to run block, pass blocking needs work. Should consider going from 325 to 305 to get better usage of his athleticism. Um, I did not have an NFL comparison for him. Um, I haven't really, the only thing I have is a uh, high school tape on this guy. He's never really played a down in a game. Um, but just from seeing his high school stuff, I mean, he is a road grader. He likes to move people. And that's the same uh, mentality that Dante Lucas has. They're both like the same size, pretty much. Um, you know, uh, if he can get healthy, man, I think he could be a really good player for this football team. Um, I couldn't really find any extensive information like how did he injure, how did he injure his shoulder? Um, um, it, I don't know if it happened in the spring game or in practice. Um, but he has a lot of potential. So he sat out this year. It was a medical red shirt. Hopefully they don't medically um disqualify him um they would still let him uh go to school and finish out his scholarship but he just wouldn't be able to play football so hopefully he can overcome this injury and be a contributor to this team Um, because he was a four-star coming out of high school he had a lot of talent still has a lot of talent just needs to get that shoulder right um my next breakdown is going to be to Kalen Brooks. And this is what I wrote about him. He's 5'10", 209 pounds. A great pedigree from father Derek Brooks. Followed in dad's footsteps by coming to Florida State University. Fast and athletic. Um, he's undersized for the linebacker position. Needs to get stronger. Needs to get in the film room. Started all season in 2018. He looked overwhelmed at times. With the addition of other linebackers in the last couple of recruit recruiting cycles, it's going to be hard for DeKalen Brooks to get any playing time. Might consider moving to strong safety. Um, he does have like DB skills. Um, I don't know. If I wouldn't put him like in like a covered four type situation where you have two deep safeties. But if you wanted to play him as like a box safety, I think he would be great in that role. Um, Just from looking at some of the games that he played in uh, in 2018, he he flashed a little bit, but more often than not. He was overwhelmed by bigger uh, offensive linemen. Um, He couldn't disengage and make the tackle. Um, He had trouble with uh, pass coverage on his drops. So, I mean, when he came out of high school, I thought he was going to be like a really good player. But he struggled. Um, So if linebacker is going to be his position that he's going to stay with, He's going to have to work on a lot to beat out this young talent that's here at Florida State now. 
Um, I really don't see that happening. I feel like he's probably at the bottom of the depth chart. I just, it's going to be an uphill battle for him to get on the field, man. But um, you never know what hard work and dedication he might be able to beat all those guys out. Um, so we'll see what happens. I had no NFL comparison uh, for him. Um, next, I wanted to get into the college football uh, playoff aftermath. Um, I generally try to wait 24 to 48 hours before reviewing any game. Um, after seeing the uh, the uh, the breakdown on this game, on the on those games in the college football playoff on YouTube, um, I think it's pretty safe to say that Oklahoma shouldn't have been in that game. I mean, it was like 49 to LSU put up 49 points in the first half. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, I think if you would have, and I'm not an SEC guy, everything, this is Go Nose podcast, so <laughs> I'm not an SEC guy, but I think Alabama could have gave them a better game than what Oklahoma did. They got boat raced. Um... Uh, it's safe to say that Oklahoma is overrated. Um, if I mean, but at the end of the day, if Florida State is not in a college football playoff, I really don't have a dog in the fight. And I just like to kind of stay up to date on, you know, everything that's going on in college football. Um, also, I didn't know that Trevor Lawrence had, uh, you know, speed like that, man. He outran the whole Ohio State defense. I mean, really this whole season, he's never had to do a whole bunch of running, but I just didn't know that he was that fast. Um, Ohio State, they got shafted. Um, I don't know if that was T. Higgins or Ross who caught that pass and basically took four steps and the guy stripped it. That was a fumble. But, um, I think it's kind of like karma because of the uh, the timeout or the pass interference and in, uh, against Miami back in 02. Um, you know, like I said in previous episodes, I was watching that game and I'm not a Miami fan by any stretch, but that made me mad when they called that pass interference. And, <laughs> you know, I think that's karma, man. Finally, it got back on them. And, uh, I'll be coming with my uh, pick for the LSU-Clemson game. I think this is going to be a classic. I think it's going to be like Texas and USC from 2006. I really think it's going to live up to that. And I'll be coming with that um, probably early next week. So let's go to our next um, topic. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. It's NFL stuff, but it has a Florida State tie-in. Christian McCaffrey. When he came out of Stanford, I hated on him. I thought he was a scat back. I thought he wasn't durable. Um, it wasn't because he's a white running back. It was not because he was running back. Let me reemphasize that. Or let me emphasize that I was wrong. I was wrong about him. He's a beast. Um, he's multidimensional. I mean, he's the best running back in the NFL, bar none. Um, if Cam Newton could get healthy um, and they can get a number one receiver, they could be something special. Now, this is the Florida State tie-in. I felt like Dalvin Cook was the better player um, coming out of college. Um, Dalvin Cook played in a harder conference. Christian McCaffrey played in the Pac-12. Dalvin Cook obviously played in the ACC. Um, I felt like the ACC had better competition. Um, but Christian McCaffrey can do a lot more stuff than Dalvin Cook. So... To compare those two guys, Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook, I did a couple of different things. So I started with Jukes. 
I feel like Christian McCaffrey <laughs> has better jukes than Dalvin Cook. They seen that yesterday in the game against the Saints. Um, hands catching. Christian McCaffrey went over a thousand yards. One thousand yards receiving, had almost fourteen hundred yards rushing. So, Christian McCaffrey is a bona fide wide receiver. So I gave that edge to Christian McCaffrey. Um, speed. Uh, I kind of gave him a tie on that one, but Christian McCaffrey might be a little bit faster than Dalvin Cook. Uh, power. Obviously, Dalvin Cook is a little more powerful than Christian McCaffrey. He is more willing to try to run over people than Christian McCaffrey. Then I went to, uh, I think as a running back, you have to pass block a little bit. I think Dalvin Cook is the better pass blocker. Um, most value to their team. Now, obviously, the Minnesota Vikings has uh, Diggs and Thielen and Cousins and uh, Rudolph. Christian McCaffrey doesn't have that. He has Greg Olson on offense and... Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, he has, I forget the guy's name, DJ Moore. He has him and he really doesn't have any other elite players on offense. So, uh, value to team I gave to Christian McCaffrey. Um, my next category is special teams. Sometimes they do put Christian McCaffrey back on punt returns and kickoff returns. I think Dalvin Cook could do that, but um, I haven't seen him do it yet. So I gave that edge to Christian McCaffrey. Um, just who do I feel is the better player as a pro? I'm going to have to say Christian McCaffrey, man. It's hard to do my boy Dalvin Cook like that. But um, I have to give the edge to him. All right. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was Jameis Winston. He is in a rare club. 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. Um, you know, when he came out of college, I thought he was going to be like the next great quarterback. And, you know, I just read some stuff on the Internet. This guy's asking for 40 million. Really? You threw 30 interceptions, Jameis Winston. You're not getting 40 million. Um, I would say maybe 30. Maybe. Maybe. We don't know what kind of player you're going to be. You're a head case. And, you know, it's hard for me to say that about you because you won a national championship you brought florida state back to relevance but i mean it's true um you know that incident with the saints player last season you know we need to see less of that and more production on the field um i just don't know how a quarterback throws 30 interceptions unless he's intentionally <laughs> doing it um you still my guy though, um, because you Florida State, you brought us back to relevance. So, um, you know, hopefully everything can work out. They can get you some more receivers on that team. And besides Evans, um, I forget the other guy's name. That's really good. Goodwin, Godwin. Um, then you got the tight end, but uh, your offensive line really isn't that good. So, or your running game. So you need to fix that so you can throw less, thus throwing less interceptions. Um, so that's going to complete episode number 32, January 1st, 2020. I want to thank everyone for the tremendous support on this podcast. It's available on YouTube. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify Podcasts. Sp Spotify Podcasts. Um, as always, thank you for your support again and go Knowles.